Okay. So the first bone we're looking at is the hyoid bone. This guy right here, it's U-shaped. If we look at the side, you can see you have a couple projections that stick up. You don't need to know any surface features of the hyoid bone. You just need to be able to recognize the hyoid bone. This sits up under your chin. Okay, if you refer to the picture on page 132, and it helps kind of protect the trachea a little bit. So this bone is the one that's commonly broken as someone is being strangled. If you ever watch CSI, they tell you, oh, the hyoid bone was broken. That indicates the person was strangled. Well, it's because that bone is up, right up underneath your chin, around your throat. And it's cool because this is the only bone that is not articulating with another bone in your body. It's attached to a set of eight muscles called the hyoid muscles. So it's not in direct contact with another bone, which is kind of neat. Okay, we've already talked about the basic regions of the spinal cord, the cervical region, the thoracic region, the lumbar region, the sacrum, and the coccyx. So for a quick review, how many vertebrae are in the cervical region? Seven. Seven. How many are in the thoracic region? Five. And then the lumbar? Five. How many in the sacral? Four or five, usually about five. And then what happens as you, about your age right now? They fuse together to become one large, irregularly shaped bone. And then the coccyx, about the average of four, and that fuses around the same time. Okay. <clears throat> now, as far as identifying different types of vertebra, you will be need to know the difference between a cervical vertebra thoracic vertebra, and a lumbar vertebra. So we're going to go through those differences. <clears throat> and we're going to look at a thoracic vertebra as our kind of our general vertebra. So I'm going to bust out one of these. Okay. So... Here is a thoracic vertebra. So on our list, we're going to kind of go through the structures that you would find on any typical vertebra, and then we will talk about some of the distinct vertebra that are very unique and those features that make them very unique. Okay, so the first thing to find is the body. So on any vertebra that you have, you should be able to find the body of the vertebra. And so the body is this large, kind of padded, pad-looking portion of the vertebra, okay? So it does not matter what type of vertebra you have, it, they will all have a body. And so you would have an intervertebral disc above and below. So separating each vertebra on, in the body region, you'd have an intervertebral disc. <clears throat> And a typical vertebra that you, if you want to follow along, well, you should follow along, but in the book, it's on page 133. <clears throat> okay. The next structure you'll find on most vertebra is the transverse process. So we're looking at this vertebra here, the transverse process. So this is the body. Let's make this, ana let's make this correct. This is the anterior side of the vertebra. This is the posterior side. This structure I'm holding here, that's a transverse process. This is the left transverse process. And then this side, this is the right transverse process. Okay? Is it the same on all of them? Yes. Okay. Transverse process. <laughs> some will be bigger, some will be smaller, depending on which vertebra you're looking at. Okay. Um... Intervertebral, no, not that one, sorry. Vertebral foramen. Why don't you hold up your vertebra and point to the foramen for me? Yeah, you can stick your finger right through it, that lovely hole. What's passing through that hole? The spinal cord, right. Okay, spinous process. That's another one that sticks out. 
Okay, so it's, you're still looking at this vertebra in anatomical position. The spinous process points posteriorly. If we look at it from the side or the lateral view, it actually points downwards as well. So this is how it would be in your body. The spinous process points posteriorly and inferiorly. Okay? So when you feel your back, right? you feel those bumps along the middle of your back, those bumps that you feel, that's the spinous process of each of your vertebrae. Okay. Oof, that got close. Another structure is the pedicle. So I'm going to put this back in the correct position here. The pedicle is this branch of bone that connects the body to the transverse process. So it's like a little ring of bone. So it's next to the body. If we look at the side here, it's this portion of bone that connects the body to the the posterior part of the vertebra. So the pedicle could literally, you could draw a ring around it. Okay? This whole little part is the pedicle. So it connects the body and the other Yeah, it connects the body to the rest of the vertebra. So it's this little, little bridge of bone. Okay. Um, the lamina, so we're looking posteriorly. So the lamina is the portion of the bone that's between the transverse process and the spinous process. So it's the bridge of bone here. So you could draw a circle, a ring all the way through. So it's this bone between transverse process and spinous process on both sides. So you could have a left and a right lamina. Okay. So if I'm holding it in the correct position, this is your left lamina. And then right here is the right lamina. Okay, <clears throat> we'll turn our vertebra to the side and you should be able to see the vertebral notch. See if you can see that on your vertebra. The vertebral notch is on the inferior side and though it's, it's literally like a big chunk of bone was taken out. Okay? And you're holding it. So what that vertebral notch does, when you join several vertebra together, oh, let me show you. So here's a um, generic model showing two vertebra. When you join two vertebrae together, there should be an intervertebral disc here. That vertebral notch with the vertebra below it forms a hole that passes all the way through. That hole that's formed by these two bones, what passes through on either side is going to be their spinal nerve. Okay? That's what we would call the intervertebral foramen. You can only have an intervertebral foramen when you have two vertebra together to form this hole. Okay. Okay, so on our typical vertebra, we have two structures left. We need to find the superior articular facets. Okay? And the articular facet. Okay, so superior articular facet. I'm going to turn our vertebra on the side here. So we have here's the body. You should see two little pieces of bone that stick up superiorly from the body. And it's smooth on the posterior side. You guys see those? Those are your superior articular facets. This is where your vertebra articulates with the vertebra above. So if we look at this guy again, we have two vertebrae together. There's your superior articulating facet for this vertebra. 
on both sides so it's nice and smooth like it is here. This is where the surface of the vertebra above articulates. Okay. Then you have what we would call just the articular facet, which is inferior on either side of the spinous process. So we're looking underneath the vertebra, the inferior view. You see a nice smooth spot on either side. It's on the lamina on the underside. Probably the most correct thing to say would be the inferior articulating facet. Okay, so inferior articular facets. So this is articulating with the vertebra below. And then our superior articulating facets articulate with the vertebra above. Okay. Oh, that's what happened when I wrote this inferior got to the line above instead of the line below. I'm sorry. So make sure you have that down. Inferior versus superior. Okay. So we've gone through all the typical structures. Okay. Next, we are going to look at some very specific vertebra. And then when I am done, we have some examples up here. And you can come and look at them. When you're done, put them back to the next group of students can look at them. We are going to talk about the atlas and the axis. And so I'm just trying to find the other one super quick here. Oh, there's the highway. There are two special um, cervical vertebrae, but before we talk specifically about what makes them special, so here are two cervical vertebrae. These are pretty unique. Uh, here's a, what an average cervical vertebra would look like. And so the cervical vertebra has one structure that you will not see on any other vertebra, and it's the little hole on either side of the body. Okay, so only cervical vertebra have that. So I could simply ask you next week on your quiz, I could put this out there and say, what type of vertebra is it? And hopefully you would remember, oh, these little holes, one on either side, that's a transverse foramen. Only cervical vertebra have that. Yes, sir? These have some holes in it, though. Those are man-made holes. Yeah, they used to be part of an articulated skeleton, but good observation, okay? So if it's on either side of the body and natural holes, then those are the transverse foramen and it would be a cervical vertebra. Hey, it was a good question. It's good to be sure, okay? Totally fine. Um, so next, we have two very special cervical vertebra and C1 and C2, and they have special names. So first we'll talk about C1. This is C1. Hello. Okay, there we go. And you can look at this if you go to page 134. First of all, you want to be able to figure out which, which end is posterior and which end is anterior. So what's helpful? For me, when I'm trying to figure out, okay, what's anterior versus posterior? Posterior has a longer, like a V here, okay? Nice and thin, this is the posterior end. This short bump here, this is anterior, okay? And so in, your, in the book, it's showing posterior, it's, it's showing them in the wrong position, it's kind of confusing. Um, you will have these very large, superior articulating facets. Um, this is the very first vertebra. This is what your skull rests on. Do you remember the name of the structure on the skull that has an articulating surface? It's part of the occipital bone? The occipital condyle. 
So you have two occipital condyle, and they are going to articulate with these superior articulating facets. Ah. So this is very special. This is cervical vertebra number one. And it also has a special name that is the atlas. Does anybody know about the Greek, Greek mythology atlas? He was a very strong man, right? Yeah. So strong that what? He, he could hold the world. Yeah. Right. And so essentially, if we think about it in terms of our body, this vertebra is holding our head on, holding our head, which is essentially it's kind of like the world for our body. So it's a very important vertebra holding up our head and attaching it to the rest of our body. And no, no other vertebra looks like this. It's fairly flat. Okay, that's a lateral view. Um, you do need to know the basic structures of this. So you still have those transverse foramen. You still have the main one. You have your superior articulating facet. You need to know anterior versus posterior. Okay. Um, let's see, anything else? Nope. Okay. Oh, so anterior arch versus posterior arch. So, whoops, come back here. This would be your anterior arch. So small is anterior. Large one, that's your posterior arch. Okay? So those were the unique things for the atlas. Next is the axis. And the axis is cervical vertebra number two. And it has just one extra structure, a unique structure you won't find with any other vertebra, and that is the dens. So here I'm showing you the lateral view. This is anterior. This is posterior. This is the spinous process here. So at, at the anterior side where the body should be, you have this process sticking straight up. This is called the dens. And what makes it so special is that cervical vertebra one sits right on top of that and it allows you to rotate your head. See that? Woohoo! So C1 sits on top of C2. This is the anterior side where my index finger is. Oh, I forgot to show you one thing. On the anterior arch on the inside, you see that nice smooth articulating facet? That's for the dens from cervical vertebra number two. And so we actually call that the articular facet for the dens. And it makes a lot of sense when you put them together the way they're supposed to be on the body. They fit together and you see where the dens touches the anterior arch. You have a nice facet and allows you to turn your head. Not as much as an owl though. Do you know that an owl can turn their head 270 degrees? Yep. Wow, good for you. We can't do that. <laughs> but this is, these are two very unique vertebra that you will need to know. Okay? And we have a couple sets up here where they are held together. So they're bound together and you can look at them. It's kind of like stretchy string so you can look at the structures. So if you have one of those or you look at those, bring them back so that after you've looked at them so somebody else can look at those. Okay. Now we're going to look at a thoracic vertebra and what makes what's unique on a thoracic vertebra. Okay. So I've got a nice thoracic vertebra here. And let's see. A good place, uh, 135, shows you the thoracic vertebra. Almost everything is the same as, as what we've looked at already. Essentially, the big difference is with a thoracic vertebra, you have ribs that articulate with it. So you'll have facets for the ribs. You won't have those on a cervical vertebra or a lumbar vertebra. Only ribs will have it. I mean, not, sorry, <laughs> only thoracic vertebra will have it because that's the only place you find ribs. Okay, so first of all, on the list for thoracic vertebra is a transverse facet. 
And so in your book, it's called a transverse costal facet. It's going to be part of your transverse process. So just as a quick reminder, here's our body. This is a transverse process. Remember, this is our superior articulating facet. So on the end of the transverse process, so here, anterior view, on the anterior side of the transverse process is this nice little smooth indentation. That is the articulating transverse costal facet. Costal means rib, it refers to rib. So you have a rib that articulates with the transverse process, and you'll find it on both sides, okay? Transverse costal facet. <clears throat> the next one, you have <laughs> demi facets, or demi, demi. Um, that's going to be, so here we're looking at a lateral view of the rib. So here's the inferior side of the body. Right next to the vertebral notch, you sh there's a little smooth indentation. This little smooth indentation, that is a demi facet. Demi meaning small. Okay, so a small facet. That's going to be on the inferior side of the body of the rib. Most ribs, I mean, ugh, inferior side of the body of the vertebra. Most of the vertebra, the old ones, you won't see it. Some of the fake ones don't show it very well. So if you need to, we have some very nice ones that have to stay up here that you can look at to see those. Okay? So, but this is your demi facet. So that on the inferior side of the body of the vertebra. Um, only, so full body facets only says T11 and T12 will have those. Let me see if I can grab one that shows it really quick. So while I'm looking, have any of you guys ever seen Sean the Sheep? Yes. No. Oh, my son loves it. It's really funny. If you're a kid, it's funny. Or if you're a parent, it's really funny. It's, I find it actually child appropriate. Okay, so I've got a rib. Not, oh man, I really want to talk about ribs apparently. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, got a thoracic vertebra here. So here we can see the demi facet again. Try to get this at an angle where you can see it. Then at the superior surface of the body, you have another indentation. And you only see that on T11 and T12. Okay, so only two vertebrae are gonna have it. The smooth indentation here, that's your full body facet for ribs. Yeah, so only T11 and T12 will have the full body facet on the superior portion of the body. And then all thoracic vertebrae should have the demi facet and that's on the inferior side of the body of the thoracic vertebra. Right. right. Excellent. Okay. So the, this full body facet only on two thoracic ribs. Okay. <clears throat> so we've got all the thoracic stuff covered. We're going to move to the sacrum. And when I am done with this sacrum, a group can use it, but it will have to be returned to the front because it's, it's one of those fancy schmancy ones. Okay, fancy schmancy, that's right. Okay, sacrum can be found on page 136. Okay, so first of all, you were looking at the sacrum. This is the posterior view, okay? The anterior view is this view, where it's curved inwards. 
So if I turned it on its side, I don't think I can make it any smaller. This is the anterior side where it's curving in. And the posterior side is where you have these bumps and it's curved outwards. Okay? So we, let's see here. Where are we starting? Okay, so we're going to start with the posterior view. Looking for the medial sacral crest. So the medial sacral crest is made up of these bumps that are right down the midline of the sacrum. So if I kind of turn it on, the, on its side a little bit, you can see these better, the bumps. What do you think those are from? The vertebra fuse. What part of the vertebra? The spinous process. Excellent. So all along, all these bumps form what we call the medial sacral crest. That's what's left of the spinous process of each individual vertebra before it fused, okay? So this whole line, all these bumps along the line, it would be the medial sacral crest. Okay, let's see, what else can we see? All right, sacral canal, this, I think that's, yeah, that's next on our list. Um, fake, mo fake models aren't going to have the actual hole all the way through, okay? So bear with me. So we're looking, this is the superior view of the sacrum. This is essentially the body of the sacrum. This is where your intervertebral disc would be and then your last lumbar vertebra would articulate here. So this portion here should be hollow, okay? So the sacrum is hollow, has a, has a canal that goes down through here and empties out at the bottom. So this top portion right here should be hollow. That is the sacral canal. So if there's a sticker right here, just know, okay, my answer should be sacral canal for that. Okay, and, and this is the superior view of the sacrum. If we go down to the other end, the inferior view, where you see that lovely number 28, that's indicating the exit point of the sacral canal, and we'd call that the sacral hiatus, okay? So sacral canal starts at the top, the sacral hiatus is at the bottom. Um, not the spinal cord, just um, spinal nerves passing through there. Well, the nerves from here, they're going to be branching. They can branch out and travel down the legs. And, or in the, this region, you'll have a few more nerves branching off. You have nerves branching off through these holes as well. So they can innervate your pelvic region um, and upper portions of your legs. So, yeah, they're important. Yeah, those are good questions. Sacral canal, it is sacral hiatus. Okay, next we're going to do is the superior articular facets. So here's our superior view again. There's our sacral canal. We have two nice, large, smooth surfaces on either side. See those? Those are your superior articular facets for the sacrum. So these. This is where the lumbar vertebra number five would be articulating with your sacrum. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so in the book, it's a sponsor of superior articular process. Do I only need, you know, superior articular process? Yeah. Okay. So I mean, process is kind of implied because it means something that's sticking yeah. out. Yeah. So just saying superior articular facet is good. But notice, just today, we've talked a lot about articulating facets. So when you answer a question about it, make sure you specify of what bone you're talking about, okay? Just to cover your bases. Um, okay, another place where an articulation occurs, but it's a non-movable joint, is on either side of your sacrum. Oh, focus, focus, okay. And if you're looking at a sacrum, you can look at this one. It's really rough, you see that? It's not what you would expect for an, ar an articulation. So this is a non-movable joint. And so it's, the bones are stuck together. They're not supposed to move. This is an auricular facet. So your coxal bone attaches to this rough surface 
on the left side, and then again to this rough surface on the right side. What is that? That is your auricular surface. What's it for? This is where the coxal bone connects to the sacrum. So either side, either side of the hip bone, essentially. Okay, so in this rough surface here, um, it will not, it's a not, ugh, it's an unmovable joint. What is that noise? Okay. Now we have two foramen, two classes of foramen that you need to know. So you see these holes? And if we look at the inferior view, oh, there's more holes. I mean, anterior view, my bad. So posterior view, we have these holes. What do you think they're called? Posterior or dorsal sacral foramen. And if I wanted to be really specific and I was pointing at this one, it would be the, post, the right posterior sacral foramen. That's being super picky. Maybe, maybe not. I probably not, not for that, but... Is there a different name? No. See, that's why I probably wouldn't do it for this one. But I'm just saying, if there's, if there's a pair, always say right and left just to cover your bases. Because you... Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, they're... They're, they're like a mirror image, so you have the same thing on the left as you have on the right. Well, I think I'm going to like get a picture of just like this little... Oh, no. No, you will have a physical bone to, to hold and touch. Okay, well, everyone's going to know what the target is. Okay, so if you're worried about right versus left, the best way to make sure you get it the correct direction is you hold the bone, okay, how does this fit into my body? So if I'm holding the sacrum, okay how it curves out like this, this is how it would fit in my body. So this is my right side, this is the right side of the bone. So put it in anatomical position. Some people were saying it's hard because they forgot to put one. I will always remind you guys at the beginning of each quiz and sometimes in the middle of the quiz or whatever. Okay. I'll do my best because I know it's easy to forget. Um, <laughs> And, okay, there's one structure I forgot to put on here, but you need to put, write down the word transverse ridges. Where? I said write down transverse ridges. That's seen on page 136 in figure the A, the anterior view. So I will show you. So here's our anterior view. You see these lines? These lines are the transverse ridges. These are where the bodies of those individual vertebra fused together. And since we're, still, we're looking at the anterior view, 